Good morning, dear devotees, friends. Let us begin, as usual, with this mantra. Shantakaram bhujagashayanam Padmanabham suresham Vishwadharam gagana sadrisham Meghabarnam shubhangam Lakshmi Kantam Kamala Nayanam Yogi Vidhyana Gamyam Bande Bishnum Bhava Bhaya Haram Sarva Lokaikanatam Before we begin our discussion on the secret of spirituality, I like to congratulate and humbly offer my pranam to all the mothers of the world. Today is the Mother's Day. Usually every year on this particular day, I used to offer flowers and some candies to our mothers who used to come to visit our ashrama as because this is a, a different situation I cannot physically offer you, but here I am offering you the flower and also the candy to all the mothers. Be happy and bless us all. Who can be called as a mother? The one who always feel happy at the progress of her children. And the mother is always happy when she sees that her children are becoming good. And that is exactly the approach of the Divine Personality. The Divine Personality, the Avatar, they come to help the humanity to develop the righteousness so that they can become really happy. Why do I say really happy? Because this world cannot give us happiness. A little bit of happiness here and there, as sometimes with ice cream, sometimes with the movie, sometimes with the company of the friends, but all temporary. After that, again, it goes back to the square one, which is misery. So we always feel unhappy, lonely, frustrated, so from that we have to go beyond all this and be in a place where constantly we are happy. And that is called spirituality. And what is the secret of spirituality? In the last two classes we have discussed who is a sadhu, a holy person and who is a good devotee who is a real sadhu, is a holy person, and a real devotee, bhakta. Lord has also mentioned 11 symbols as objects. And on those objects we can worship, considering him in that, the supreme being. And those are, as we all know, the last class we were discussing, the sun, the fire, the holy person, the cow, the devotee, the sky, air, water, earth, soul, and then finally, all beings. This is the beauty of the Hinduism. They will start with a small little thing and slowly, slowly it will take you to the ultimate, which is unfathomable and unmeasurable. Sarvabhutani, all beings. Each soul is potentially divine, the Swami Vivekananda said. It is not his, the statement as some people they give. No, it is a realization. What is that realization? Each soul is divine. And Swamiji said, Swamiji puts in this way, each soul is potentially divine. 
and goal is to manifest this divinity within how by controlling nature external and internal so these are the things that we have to the so surya agni brahmana gava vaishnava kam marud gava means all the animals and kam marut jalam bhu atman sarva bhutani bhadra pujadani cha me that is we have already started the krishna he taught the uddhava how to worship now the god is everywhere and suddenly you cannot go and simply throw some flower at the sky and say hey, i am worshiping you no so you need some object why at this much that's why swami vivekananda once again swami vivekananda he said that we travel from lower truth to higher truth i repeat lower truth to higher truth and that is the main thing never from error or from mistake to the truth no never from darkness to light no the darkness that in the upanishad it says the that take me from darkness to light that is a ignorance to the in our knowledge the knowledge of spirituality so this swami vivekananda's words from lower truth what is the lower truth i need an object i need an object to concentrate so i can express all my emotion on that object and that is the reason hindus have given complete freedom you can choose any object why if all are not god why the hindu will give you that object even the cow animals rivers the oceans the sky the moon this everything you can make an object because each and everything is the expression of the same god is nothing but god there is only one god that we know but the child don't know the person who is starting beginning his spiritual life won't be able to know and that is the reason so many things have come so this is the object the lord has said 11 objects but the 11th one sarva bhutani anything that you like anything now that we should develop the faith and devotion to god to worship him according to sri krishna faith and devotion can be acquired ishta purtena through ishta what is that ishta and purta this is agni hotra that means yagya and austerity tapasya practice of truthfulness satya reading scripture adhyayana ved adhyayana serving the guest atithi seva and offering to gods dev ahuti and that is called ishta if you go to the the punjabis sikh punjabis they call it gurudwara their temple is known as gurudwara and if you go over there a very successful people well established people they will be taking your shoes and will say please go and meet the god and when you come back your shoes will be ready over here and when you go he will clean your shoes polish it and keep it properly and when you come back they will offer another group of people will be waiting and they will say please come over here and take some prasad they will give you some kada prasad very tasty so that way they are serving the people why the people are coming they go to god and then go away why i have to serve like that this is kal kar seva kar means the hands with the hands you are serving the people ishta i don't know all people are knowing or not but they doing it this call ishta every day you are supposed to read a few pages from a holy book that is also ishta reading from the veda adhyayana agni hatra yagya what is the yagya yagya means doing anything for the benefit of others so that is also yagya 
austerity, the tapasya, then you are saving some food and sharing that with a one who is having nothing. That is called the tapasya. I could enjoy, but I control my senses and then I give it to someone, someone else. That is called tapasya. Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna's direct disciple, Sharadananda Ji Maharaj, he was traveling on a very steep path in the Himalaya region. It was drizzling, slippery. A stick is essential to climb to that hill. But he found as another elderly person, a villager, was not having anything. He immediately offered his stick to that gentleman and he himself started somehow to climb. Tapasya, that is called tapasya. Whatever I am having, if you need, I am ready to give you. That is called tapasya. So we don't understand the meaning of tapasya. We go and stand. These, those are also tapasya. Kaik, bachik, manasik, all these different tapasya has been explained in the Bhagavad Gita particularly to promise that I am not going to tell any harsh word to anyone. Any sentence, any word that will hit others and make him or her sorry for that. No, I will never do that. I control my tongue. That is called bachik tapasya. Always telling this inspiring, always positive tapasya. These are all come under ishta. And Atiti Sheva, when some guests are coming, you are supposed to give them some help and to attend them, to see that when they go out, they go back, they are very happy. Why? God is visiting you. So each and everything, you see the Hindus, they take your whole mind, everything you are doing. You are receiving guests, you are inviting some people, but even in that, oh, we are socializing, hey, come, how are you, that is okay. But you should see that they are really happy. And in the way that they are also developing their spirituality, their thinking level, that is called Atiti Sheva. Almost every house, every weekend, they are having the Atiti. But that's called party. They are all jumping, enjoying the company of each other, that's all. But Atiti is a completely different. He comes without announcing. The person who is coming without announcing, you should not be unhappy. It's okay for me. Please come. How can I help you? So that is called Atiti Sheva. Friends, this is called Ishta Purta. These two little, the small words we hear again and again. And this is Ishta. And what is Purta? Purta, the Manu Samhita, is the lawgiver. The Hindu society it runs according to the law of the Manu. So, lawgiver Manu says, Bapi, Kupa, Tadagadi, Devayatana Nanicha, Annapradana Marama. Purtam iti avidhiyate. The in in Hindi and in Indian language they call purta vibhag. And you know, purta vibhag, what is that? P W D. Public works, the, the department. They are doing all these things. They are supposed to do that in every country, every society. It is there in different names. This P W D, which is known in the India. They are supposed to take care of the tanks, the water tanks, wells, the ponds and the temples. You know the three times tanks, wells and ponds they have mentioned. You know why? In those days, the water scarcity, drinking water was not available. People used to drink from the river. Of course, those river, they are very clear. So they used to drink like that. But a society, you need how to maintain the water, rainwater collection, then, then also purifying it, sending it for drinking. So all these things were done by the kings 
all the landlords they call purta and if you do that our government is doing it they are supposed to do but when the kings used to do or the landlords used to do they were not compelled to do but they used to do you know why they used to do for the betterment of the people and that is also a religious and the holy work so ishta and purta anna pradana marama and making the gardens making the making the places where people can come and can feel happy these are all come under the purta vibhaga anna pradana distribution of food that means ration nowadays in india it is all ration all governments are arranging the ration the food should come and it should go over there and the poor people can have it and the people can go and purchase from there so like this the ration system purta it comes under that anna pradana marama making the gardens purtam miti avidiyate so ishta and purta suppose you are a rich man then you can do all these things you will acquire the spirituality the blessings of god so that is also there the god said you can worship on the 11 objects and also you can have the blessings of god you can acquire that spirituality through ishta and purtam that he is telling and then he is telling in this way not only sri krishna thought the uddhava taught how to worship those objects and at the same time he said surije tu vidya esha habisha agno yaje tamam how you will worship surya you cannot throw flower to surya it is not possible so that he is giving the ex- how to instruction how to worship this is really so complete when they are giving the teachings they are giving complete teaching first you like to worship surya majority of the hindus they worship surya the early mo- morning they will get up they will purify themselves and then they will sit for meditation and when the sun rises they are supposed to get up at least minimum 1 hour before or half an hour before sunrise then they will wait for the sunrise and when their sun is rising almost all the brahmins they are supposed to they will be chanting yava kushuma samkasham kashya piyam mahadutim dantarim sarva papagnam pranato smriti vakaram so in my life in two places and the profound uh, that sunrise that i have noticed one in himalaya and i went to if from darjeeling if you you have to go in bengal the darjeeling Dar- 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 then you can it's called falut and on the top of from the top of the hill when the sun is rising in the east you can see the reflection on the mount everest and there is a, a little in you know, a carb is there in the mount everest and when that light is falling on that as if a golden throne it is there and as if the lord shiva will come and sit on that that is the imagination but the beauty all the small small the clouds and the light is reflecting on the clouds as if millions of birds of different colors they are flying the many people they go and europeans they all keep information about it and then americans they go and they photograph and all that that was one and another i saw the, in the millennium day the first millennium day in the bay of bengal the, that huge ocean and the sun was rising that is this is sun is worship how you worship the sun surije tu vidya esha habisha agno yaje tamam atutthena tu vipragyo goshu yavadanina you should worship me m capital me the god with the vedas 
in the sun. When the sun is rising, we are not throwing anything, but we are chanting the Vedic mantras. That is the worship of the sun. But what is that sun? The God himself. You are worshipping me with the Veda mantra in the sun. Second, he said, you should worship me with the clarified barter in the fire. We have to remember again and again, when you are giving the oblation to the fire, it is not fire, it is God. So that is the main thing. You should worship me with hospitality in the holy persons. When the people are coming, visiting, so we have to worship him, the God has come. In those days, in the olden days, they had the practice of worshiping, the washing the feet because the road were dusty, they used to come in that. So Indian people, the first thing they used to do, asking them to stand on a plate and they used to wash the feet. That, is, that was the humbleness the, that I am worshiping your feet. And that is the way they always used to do, worshiping the feet. That is the, uh, the hospitality. And offering the fodder to the animals, that is also, they belong, uh, they are also the manifestation of God and the friendly respect in the devotees. When you are meeting the devotees who are the believers in God, you should be friendly with them, talking with them in a friendly manner. And that is the way. I am the knower of all creatures. Shetragya Sarva Bhuteshu. This is Vedanta. It begins with duality. That is the sun, God, and I am worshipping sun. I am worshipping the animals. I am worshipping the fire. But why? See, again, immediately from the Dvaita, God is taking you to Advaita. Shetragya Sarva Bhuteshu. I am the knower in all creatures. The body and also the mind. In the mind there is intellect. On the intellect the reflection of the consciousness. That is called Shetragya. This is body called Shetra. What is the body? Body, mind, complex, Shetra. Shetra means the field. Shetragya who knows about this, that is God. And who is it? The reflection of the consciousness on our intellect. It's not real. Reflection of the consciousness. And that is called Shetragya. With equality, you should worship. Samatina Yajet Maam. But unfortunately, we forget it. We don't worship equally. Sometimes some people will come and they will never salute, they will never offer the respect to our God. Why? It is your God. We are not wrong. So this we have to understand. Wherever we go, any holy place, we have to go and bow down. Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna used to visit all holy places. That is the uniqueness of Sri Ramakrishna and we are the followers of Sri Ramakrishna. He used to go to that place who were criticizing Hinduism. The Brahmas, they were devi deviating from the Hinduism, they were developing a separate path. Sri Ramakrishna was not critical about them, then he never criticized them. Rather, he was curious to go and see how they are worshipping. Oh, you are also worshipping the same God, the God that I worship in the form of Kali, the mother. You are also worshipping. So this is the beauty of the religion. If we read any Hindu scripture, original Hindu scripture, you will find this. Dvaita, Advaita. From Dvaita, it will take you to Advaita and always say everything at the same. So the Lord is telling over here, Shetragya Sarva Bhuteshu Samatena Yajet Maam. You must equally worship me. So this is the way it is going. And then the Lord said, O Dava, 
the efficient and the best way to develop devotion is the company of the holy sages. Just like the mother, you know, the God is the, like a mother. He is the friend and he is his master. But no, he is behaving like a mother, very soft, kind heart and completely concerned, very much concerned about the development of his devotee, the Uddhava. So he told Uddhava who is a sadhu, who is a devotee, of how the worship can be on the object, though the God is all pervading, but there are objects that they are anything in this world, but always think that this is the manifestation of me. So worship samatena equally. Now he is telling, but I will tell you a secret. What is that secret? He will come to that. And that secret is he is telling, you know how it is possible to develop the devotion unless you have the faith and devotion. There is no question about the spirituality. I don't believe in God. I don't have any devotion. Then why should you discuss about it? So you have to have the faith in the existence of God and at the same time you should develop attachment to God, love for God which is known as devotion. Now he is telling you can develop these two things you know by how? By worshipping Surya, by worshipping the sun, worshipping in many other ways it is possible and also practicing Ishta Purta possible. But the best and the easiest way is the company of the holy people. So he is telling prayena, bhakti yogena, satsangena bina uddhava, na upaya vidyate sangram pray, prayanam hi satam aham. O uddhava, the efficient and the best way to bhakti yoga is the company of the holy person. Because I am the goal of the holy person. They always represent me. Who is a holy person? Now we will come to that. Now here the, he gives the shortcut. What is the shortcut? Instead of doing all those things, it is not possible reading good books every day and to watch, offer the yajna and this, that. It is not possible. Okay. The God knew it. In the modern time, it won't be possible. And that is the reason he is telling, you better go to be a holy person. Because the holy person, now he is giving the indication, because the holy person means, he knows nothing but me, me the God. He knows nothing in this world except me. In a dramatical way, to draw the full attention of Uddhava, the Lord said, I am going to tell you the profound secret. Paramam Griham. Paramam, profound. Griham, secret. Though most confidential, su gopyam. It is very confidential, but still I shall tell you because you are my obedient companion and friend. The God is disclosing the truth. To whom? If those who have read the gospel of Sri Ramakrishna, sometimes you must have come across that. The Sri Ramakrishna is telling that you are my own. You are my inner circle. I can disclose many things to you which is not possible to tell others. Why people don't believe? Rather disbelieve. Rather they will criticize. They will have fun on that. That's why Sri Ramakrishna is not disclosing. And he is telling as because you are my inner circle, very close. What is the inner circle? I am faith, believe. Then he is disclosing, you know, I saw, Sri Ramakrishna in gospel, I saw the same like me, someone came out of me and he was roaming with me. If, it, if he says to the other people, they won't believe it. Rather, they will know this is just his commenting like this, only the very close circle people can say like this. The Lord Jesus, he took his chosen disciples and gave them some instructions. That is, 
the very special instructions to his inner circle. It always happened. So this is the way we have to understand. Bhagavan Ramakrishna, he is telling, if you know God, then you know everything. And he puts that word God as Babu. Babu means the one who is having a lot of wealth and knowledge. So if you go and develop friendship with that Babu, you know everything. So develop intimacy with the master and he will tell you all about him. Now we are entering into the 12th chapter. All this time we were reading the 11 skanda, that means the 11th book, 11 adhyaya, 11 chapter. And now 11 skanda, but 12th chapter. Why I am telling this in so details? The many of you are very much interested to read the original book. This is available in our bookstore online also. And this book will give you a wonderful insight. Let us read this verse, first and second verses from the 12th chapter. The Bhagavan himself is telling, Na rodayati vam yogo, na samkyam dharma ebacha, na sadhvaya tapatyaga, na ishta purtam, na dakshina, bratani yagya chandamsi, tirthani niyama yamaha, yatha abaruddhe satsanga, sarva sanga apoha imam. This is the secret. The secret of spirituality, I gave that today's talk. What is the spirituality? To become God. To feel that you are the Brahman, that is spirituality. And before that, it is all religion. Going and acquiring the knowledge from the educational institution, that is the ultimate goal. But going to the institution, educational institution, schools and colleges and talking with the professors, reading the books, going to the laboratory, all those things, religion. There is practices. But ultimate thing is spirituality. So when you go to the temple, to the churches, to the mosque, to the synagogue, all that is religion. And there the religion is different. The paths are different. The teachers are different. Environments are different. But the knowledge is the same. Because the knowledge of God, it is the same. So we should not waste our time fighting and criticizing. Rather, if I feel that Vedanta is my path, Hinduism I should follow. Follow. And don't be this, the, the, the hearted, that is, you are thinking, oh, I am following Hinduism, but I am an European, I am an American, I have this type of dress, dress and I have this type of culture, I should not imbibe all those. Wrong thing. Once you are imbibing, imbibing the full thing. Fully, completely. And then proceed. One life I dedicate for this. If I don't realize God, no problem. Next life I will try. So many hundreds of lives I have wasted. One more life, no problem. Let me try with the instructions of the Sri Ramakrishna Vivekananda, Ma Sarada. That should be the determination. Otherwise, no progress. I will be half like Europeans and half like Indians. And I criticize India for everything and their behavior wastage of time. I have accepted this, so I go in this way. So this is the path and the God said it is possible only through holy company. This is very important. Friends, I should tell you this very quickly, otherwise we won't be able to complete. He says, the God is telling to realize God one is supposed to practice what? Meditation, that means yoga, discrimination, that is jnana, virtue, that is dharma, study of scripture, swadhyaya, 
austerity tapaha renunciation tyaga rights like ishta purtam ishta purtam we just discussed charity dakshina observance of vows brata sacrifice yagya repetition of holy name mantra pilgrimage tirtha physical and mental purity yama niyama etc so that is the god then disclose the secret what is that yatha abruddhi satsanga holy company is the best practice to realize me the god because holy company destroy all other association sarva sanga apohi sarva sanga apohi one is god another is this universe this world and why sarva because in this world in this universe there are many varieties of things are there but for the god it is only one so if you go to the holy person and you have the, his company his instruction follow his path then all the attractions to this world things will go away and you can realize god that is what the sri krishna is teaching in the bhagavatam and this is the uddhava gita that we are studying and this is the last message of sri krishna after that he will cease to be that over there so we know so he is giving the last message and there he is giving the most importance on the sadhu sangha those who are associated with the sri ramakrishna ideology you know the sri ramakrishna in his four practices core practice when the someone asks him question can i realize god and how then he said in the four ways you can realize god and the first very first thing is sadhu sangha sadhu sangha that means the company of the holy nirjan bash a living in a solitude discrimination vichara and prarthana the devotional way to talk to god that is prarthana the first is sadhu sangha but the question is who is a sadhu once again we have already read and we know the sri krishna has given the 28 sometimes they say 30 the 28 wonderful qualities if a person is having those qualities he can be called as a sadhu bhagavan sri ramakrishna it just gave in a small one line he said sadhu means whose is whole thing is body mind and intellect merged in god mon pran antaratma ishare gato veche that he has no ego at all in him is the complete transformation of god in that body he is called sadhu ashtavakra muni you are also giving the idea about the holy person to the janaka and we are also studying that every second saturday we study this ashtavakra samhita in the ashtavakra there is 17 chapter 16th verse he says na himsa naiva karunyam is a very unique way of ashtavakra he always says like that na himsa naiva karunyam न औध्यत्तम न च दीनता न आश्चर्यम नहीं बचा शोभ शीना समसरणे नरे शीना समसरणे नरे हुज वर्ल्डी डिजायर्स हैव बीन एग्जॉस्टेड शीने शीने मींस वेरी थीन एग्जॉस्टेड व्हाट समसरणे वर्ल्डी थॉट्स नरे the a human whose worldly thoughts are completely exhausted for him how you will know that his worldly thoughts are completely exhausted now astavakar in his own unique way he said that neither compassion nor desire 
to harm. After this, he will not have compassion, not desire to harm. The duality is not there. Neither compassion, not desire to harm. Something has happened. And I feel compassionate. Oh, sorry, why they should do like this? Or I feel angry and think like protesting. No, nah, nothing is there. Neither humility nor humbleness. Neither wonder nor mental disturbance. No ascharja, neva cha shova. Shova disturbances. Ascharja, wonder. Oh my God, why this should happen? No, nothing. Can you imagine how the person that is called sadhu, that is a holy person, because he knows everything what is going to happen. Arjuna, again I will take you to Mahabharata. The Arjuna, man like him, a hero, he was completely broken. And he said, oh my God, what is going to happen? We are going to kill each other. We are friends, we are brothers, we are relatives. We are known to each other. Why for a, just a plot of land? No, we should not do it. He was disturbed. What about Krishna? He was quietly sitting and observing. He knew what is going to happen. So that is exactly neither compassion nor desire. Na himsa naiva karunyam. Na uddhattam na chadinata. Na ascharjam naiva cha shova. Shina samsarani nare. If we find this type of person, go and touch his feet. He is the holy person. Now, Atharva Ved, Niralamba Upanishad, he defines heaven and hell. I am quoting here, it is very interesting. Because always we think about the heaven and always we think about the hell that we should not go over there. And we are so eager to send whom we don't like to hell. Go to hell. That is always in English they say when they are angry. So we, why this is very bad place, and heaven is a good place. You know what? Now it says, Atharva Veda is asking, Ko Naraka, Naraka means hell. What is Naraka? Asat, Samsara, Bishoi, Samsarga Eva, Naraka. Naraka is not a place that we will go. We have to go from here to Naraka. No, not like that. If you are having the bad company, you are in Naraka, you are in hell. Every day you are suffering and living like an animal. You are thinking that you are driving a very costly car and spending a lot of money and drinking other, the tons and gallons of the wine and then falling down here and there and then somehow you spend the whole night and Next morning, the same person. You are in Naraka. So that he says, Asat Sang, Samsara Bishai. Asat Samsara Bishai, if you take in this way. Asat means which is not permanent. Samsara, that constantly moving. And Bishai, he is thinking that as permanent and trying to acquire it. And his process of acquiring is all bad, either killing or cheating. By that way, they are becoming rich, barren. Let them be. But their company is like the Naraka. We have to understand this. And of course, Swarga is asking, what is heaven? Only small two words. Satsanga, Sarga. Association of holy person is heaven. See, this is also the Hindus, they believe that they have the karma phala. Master Mahasaya Sri Ma and his friend and relative, Sidhu, Siddhesha, both of them went to meet Sri Ramakrishna. After the first account that the Siddhesha taking uh, Master Mahasaya to Sri Ramakrishna, have you ever read about Siddhesha? No. He never returned to Sri Ramakrishna, the God himself. Rather, 
Master Mahasaya started visiting again, again and again. And what the Master Mahasaya saw in Sri Ramakrishna? He saw as if the Shukadeva is expounding the Bhagavata, the message of Krishna, and all people are sitting around. So this is the way the he is de describing. What is Swarga? Holy company. What do you find in the holy company? All positive thoughts, never ne negative, and all beautiful music, and people are each other very friendly, happy, trying to help each other. That is Swarga. So this is the way. Sometimes some people, they come in the ashrama, and then they will make a small group, and then they will go on criticizing this man. They are also coming to the ashrama. But why they should come here? Our, our thing should be more. We should have the control of all the activities. That is not Swarga. That is not Holy Company. Please be aware of it. I believe in it. So if you are trying to get the God realization, the developed spirituality, listen to the words of Bhagavan Krishna, Sri Krishna, the great God. What he said, Satsanga. And what is satsanga, where your mind becomes broad, as Swami Vivekananda said to his dis brother disciple. He said, I don't know whether I have realized God or not, but I can accept even the devil if that is there, anything like that. That means I can accept everyone, the broadness of mind. Now, let us go to Shankaracharya. The Lord said, Sri Krishna said, Satsanga. And in the Satsanga, Sri Ramakrishna gave the definition. Ashtabhakra Muni gave the definition. Now, Acharya Shankara, he is telling, he is telling in this way, who is, he is asking the question, who is a holy person? K Santi, Santaha is very, very important. That's why so many people there again and again discussing on this. K Santi Santa, who is a holy person? Then he himself replying, Akila Bita Ragaha, completely free from desire. Again and again we have to repeat ourselves. To become holy person means you to give up all desire, all desire. And for the monks, the last desire is clapping of the people. That is the last desire. And that is very, very difficult to overcome. The great personalities, they rise up to that and then they fall. Then as they were showing, as the coronavirus, it is rising and then flatting. They are very happy that it is not rising again. And then it will come down. But in the life of a monk, it should not be like that. Rising means rising until it realizes the God of the Supreme. It is not flattening and coming down. And it is happening because some people after practicing spirituality will go some. And then the moment the, your power, the God's power is manifesting, immediately the world is attracted. And then the moment the world is attracted, you are dragging down. Again, you are going down. So that is... Akhila Bita Raga. Raga means the desire. Akhila, completely. Bita, gun. Who is a holy person? Shankaracharya is asking. Kesanti Santa. First quality, no desire. Second, Apasta Moha. No delusion also. No delusion about anything. Then I will go to this place, I will go to that place. If I meet to that man, it will be good. If I have this, no moha, no delusion, completely knowing that Lord is doing everything. If he wants, he will send people, he will send money, everything will be, I will be just in the front as a purohita, that's all, and nothing. And then finally he said, Shiva Tatta Nishtha is completely dedicated to the auspiciousness, we will never do any harm, we will never do anything wrongly, never. Shiva Tattanishtha, why should I do in this way? 
Now, this is wrong. I will never do. Now, Sri Ramachandra, he also wanted to know from his guru, Vashishta Dev, how to distinguish a holy person. How to find a holy person. How to know a holy person. And Vashishta also telling the same thing. Let's look at this. Lobha, Moha, Rusham, Yasya, Tanutanu Dinam Bhavet, Yatha Shastram Biharati, Sa Karmasu, Sa Sajjana. Yoga Vashishta he said, Lobha, the greed, Moha, the delusion, Rusham means anger. Lobha and Moha, it goes together. What is the Moha? Moha is delusion. What is the delusion? Oh, this is very good. I see something and start thinking, oh, this must be so wonderful, so good. That I went to visit some place and the hotel where they saw and from the front, it's so beautiful. The big glass doors and these and that, everything was nice. But when I went inside, the dirty bathroom and the bed was not also very good and there is no window. From the outside, it was so good. So Moha, when you see something wonderful, good, you think, oh, it is going to be very joyful. But if you go inside, acquire that, then you find nothing. So this always it happens. That's called Moha. So Lobha, desire. Moha, delusion. Rusham, anger. Why? My desire is not fulfilled. So that anger. Tanutanu dinam bhavet. That means the desire, the delusion and the anger has been completely erased from the mind. And this is negative and positive. Yatha shastram biharati. As per the injunction of the scripture, he is leaving. What is that? You should not accept excess thing. Whatever is necessary for you, it's okay. But excess you should not take. You should not cheat someone to gain something. Never. This is all Shastra. So, Yatha Shastram Biharati. His life is according to the injunction of the scripture. And Sa Karmasu. He is completely dedicated in his own duty. Sa Karma. As a monk, I have some responsibility duty. I must perform that. As a householder, you have some responsibility. You must do that. Sa Sajjana. He is a holy person. The secret of spiritual life is holy company. In a one scripture it says, Satam Sangohi Beshajam. Beshaja means, means the medicine. And these worldly things is so difficult to go out because I have already been intoxicated. I cannot come out of it. Sometimes some people at a young age, out of curiosity, they start a smoking and doing something. And by that way, they are bound in that day. It is so difficult for them to come out. And it says in the worldly things also, the desire grows and grows and grows. And that is why it says that satam sangha hi bheshajam. What is the medicine to go beyond this desire is the holy company. I think we should conclude after quoting from the Kular Navatantra. After I can conclude this. What is this Kular Navatantra? I am quoting from different scripture. What? What is sadhu? Because this is important to know. And see, almost from Sri Ramakrishna, Sri Krishna, then Sri Ramakrishna, then all the Shankaracharya, Abhashishta, then the Kularnava Tantra is telling, Satsangascha Vivekascha Nirmalam Nayanadayam. So beautiful it is putting. This is like the two eyes that will help you to go towards the goal. There is a spirituality. One is satsanga, and another is viveka. Only holy company won't do. 
There's so many people are there in association with the holy people. But they don't have the discrimination. They're only just following like that. No, that won't do. You have to understand which is good for me. And you have to understand what he is telling. What is the real meaning of it? That is called the discrimination. Satsanga cha. Cha means and. Satsanga, holy company, and bibekas cha. The discrimination, capacity to judge from the wrong to the right. Nirmalam nayanadayam. These are the two eyes. Yasya nasti. So narasa andha. The person who is not having these two quality, then is a very unfortunate, is a blind person in the field of the spirituality. He cannot do anything. Then the Lord Krishna described to the Uddhava how ordinary people are Vrindavan. Though not studied any scripture or practiced austerity to attain spiritual liberation, had achieved the highest goal just because they lived in his company. Does it mean just living in the holy company, in the holy association, can give spiritual liberation? Again, I will give the, the Sri Ramakrishna's instances because he is very modern. So many people in Dakshinesha, they used to live with Sri Ramakrishna majority of them never accepted him. Rather, they used to feel envy, they used to criticize him. Because the landlord used to love Sri Ramakrishna, respect Sri Ramakrishna, the other priest, they are very jealous of him. They criticized him. And many people were not at all liking Sri Ramakrishna. But he was there in his company. Take the life of Sri Krishna himself. So many people wanted to kill him. They wanted to kill him. Why? So association means what? Association means understanding that person, appreciating his behavior and knowledge, and then finally love him to the utmost. That is called association. The holy company Holy association doesn't mean you go and rub your shoulder with that man. No. It is not like that. You have to love that holy person. And it, the ego will completely wash out. Like, I am quoting a very small line. Uh, from the Bhagavata and the Sri Krishna has given a long and I think almost four or five uh, the lines uh, so many way to describe how you should understand that you are in the company of the holy person and then only you will get the benefit how then it, it is like as the river is merging in the ocean and then having nothing of its own. The river is becoming ocean. Like that, if you are living in the company of a holy person and then transform yourself into a holy person, then only it is the benefit. Then the Lord Krishna asked his follower and friend, Uddhava, therefore, Ud O Uddhava, Mami Kami Basharanam Atmanam, is the 12th chapter, 15 verse. Do thou wholeheartedly take refuge in me alone, me the God. So that is the ultimate. And now, friends, Uddhava is a wonderful person. Though he was having the Krishna as his friend, but he wanted to have completely the clarified thing. So he wanted to know what do you mean by that? He will ask that question and in our next discussion we will see how Uddhava is putting his question and the Lord is giving the answer. Thank you very much. Today the discussion was very important. How to understand a holy person. At the same time, how to get the benefit 
in the company of a holy person. Thank you very much. Let us complete this with this mantra. Yam Brahma Varunendra Rudra Maruta Stunanti Dibbai Stabai Bedai Sangha Padakramo Panishadai Gayanti Yam Samagaha Dhyana Vastita Tadgati Namanasa Pashyanti yam yogina yasyantam nabidu sura suragana devaya tasmai namaha Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Tatsat May peace, peace, peace unto all.